Ellie here again. In today's video, I have something really, really special to show you. This is going to be continuing on in my series of the uh, retro handheld extravaganza. In today's video, we're going to be having a look at the Atari Lynx. Now, this was lent to me by a mate of mine. Um, I don't actually own this. I thank you so much to uh, John to actually um, lending this to me. Really appreciate that. I'm sure you guys will too. Without any further ado, then let's get into it. I have a bunch of games here. This is from his collection. Um, I don't know any values of these games or anything like that. Um, so let me know if there's any like expensive ones here and I might accidentally lose that one. Um, so without any further ado then, let's have a look at the box. So on the front we have the picture of the unit. We have the uh, Atari Lynx kind of logo up here. Um, up here it says portable color entertainment system and then it says that in French, I believe that's French. Um, and then here it says features, multiplayer, multiplayer capability, high resolution graphics, battery saver, backlight switch and four channel sound. On this side um, we have the um, power specs, so we have um, AC adapter not included with the system, six AA batteries also not included and a cigarette, cigarette lighter adapter optional not included. So it doesn't come with anything to actually get this going straight away. On the bottom we have some screenshots of games um, we have California Games Surfing, Gauntlet, The Third Encounter, and Shanghai. Now, it does look like this can be played in portrait then, if, if that screenshot's in portrait, I didn't know that. Um, here we have this kind of um, kind of speech bubble, I guess. Uh, enjoy super full color video game action wherever you go, and then that in French. On this side, we have some more bits and bobs there at the bottom. On the back, we have, oh the top and the bottoms looks like quite similar actually. Um, on the back then we have a load more writing, we have a load more screenshots. Something that I find quite weird is the uh, screenshots are actually like pictures of the screen as opposed to actually um, like captures from whatever software they use to, to make this. Uh, which I find is, is quite weird. Um, and it's the, it's the same on the games as well. The games, the screenshots are really really low resolution. I'm, I'm not entirely sure why they opted for taking photos of the screen because if you have a look at say this one here you can see it looks quite washed out um, and definitely on this one at the bottom um, but anyway without any further ado I know how much I say that and there's a guy in the comments who always points out that I say that but anyway let's have a look inside the box then so how do we actually open this up without damaging it there we go so looks quite cheap I'm, I'm not gonna lie like I'm, I'm kind of getting this vibe of it's quite inexpensive I think I think the reason being is the actual the handheld um, has is really high quality and they, they made everything else really cheap um, not knowing whether or not this was actually gonna take off um, so yeah this is the manual um, as you can see in here we have some important information we have some introduction stuff there's not going to be any sort of uh, bad english translations that i can show you um they're all going to be pretty much okay there's no tetanus opportunities on the staples it all looks pretty good that's the uh the manual there no color um having a look at the actual unit itself then we have two little polystyrene um pieces here that go on either side and then the unit comes in a little plastic bag like most things do pull it out then and yeah oh my god the quality of this is is kind of uncomparable to anything else that I own um, it's got this really really nice kind of rubberized grip here so you have it's it's seriously comfortable I've never held one of these before this is my first time um, actually holding it there's the there's one of the games California games um, oddly enough the games go in backwards so you don't see a screenshot of the game when it goes in, which I, I think is quite weird actually, but I'm glad he showed me, yeah, he left that in there so I could see, um, that looks like maybe a lanyard strap. So on the top then we have the brightness setting, power, um, com, com links, not entirely sure what that is. We have headphones, volume, on this side there's nothing, on the bottom there's nothing, um, actually this kind of looks like, oh, okay, that's where the batteries go. So I believe the batteries don't actually work in this, so um, we'll have to get the AC cord up and running. On the back then it says serial number, um, we've got the nice Atari logo. Okay, so on the front then we have this really, really nice big D-pad, really definite uh, action there on the D-pad. We've got four action buttons, 
Uh, kind of similar to the uh, the Wonder Swan, which had two D-pads um, either side over here. We have the power indicator, the Lynx logo, a really nice little chrome Atari logo at the bottom. That looks really, really nice there. We've got on, power, backlight, option one, restart, flip, and option two. Um, that looks like a pause button maybe as well. It's got a kind of a pause looking thing there. The screen on this is in really, really nice shape. It's kind of um, concaved into the uh, the actual unit. I don't know if you can see that there. Let's have a look as a comparison then to the Sega Nomad. The sizes are actually quite similar. The Sega Nomad's a huge console and it's it's not massively ergonomic. You have this uh, kind of really boxy shape to it, whereas this is actually really, really comfortable. Um, this is actually a Sega Genesis or a um, Mega Drive if you're in the UK, uh, like myself. Um, actually in a handheld um, form factor, uh, really really big, screen's really small and it's got a horrible backlight. Um, and another comparison then we have the, uh, of course the Game Boy, the first of the uh, handheld revolutionary systems. Um, as you can see this is really really big compared to this. Let's uh, try and see if the batteries work. I can't remember if you said uh, the batteries don't work. Um, so I've got some batteries in this Game Boy here. So let's take a look at some games then. I've got some batteries in there. Take six, which is exactly the same as the uh, the Nomad. Um, so I've got a big stack of games. So we'll go through uh, some of the ones here. Then we've got Viking Child. Um, next up, we have Super Squeet. <laughs> really nice, really, really nice artwork on the uh, on the boxes there. I really like this one here. Uh, next, then we have Gauntlet, the third encounter. Another, oh, that's the one that was on the, uh, the screenshot on the actual box. Next up, we have Pac-Land. This is definitely going to be one of the, uh, the ones we're going to be playing today. Then we have Dirty Larry, Renegade Cop, Hard Driving. Now, I believe they made this for the Mega Drive. Uh, Blockout, which is definitely not going to be Tetris. Oh, actually, it looks like a 3D Tetris. Damn, we're going to check that one out as well. Next up, then we have Shadow of the Beast. Looks a little bit like uh, Golden Axe or something on the back there. Um, and then we have Checkered Flag, which is obviously going to be a racing game. So one thing I did notice when turning it on is it takes quite a long time to actually uh, to actually come on. We've got the brightness wheel on the top. Screen is very similar to the uh, the Nomad one. Have we got some sound? There we go. So let's have a look at another game then. So this is Gauntlet. Let's have a look inside it. Um, oh, let's hope I don't damage it or anything. Um, right. Okay. Um, so we have the game just sitting in here. Has it got any sort of box on it? No. Has it got a manual? Yeah, it does. Looks like I have some manuals here. Just looks like a normal manual. Nothing really special. Doesn't seem to be any sort of screenshots or anything. Um, pretty standard. Doesn't look like there's anything else in the box. Uh, we also have a warranty card, possibly. 90 day warranty. Ah, oh, so we can still uh, cash that in then, for sure. So let's have a look at this game. This is Gauntlet. So we're going to be playing this one in portrait by the looks of things. Really like that artwork there on the front. Can I turn the brightness down a bit? That looks like the best I can get it. How, so how do we, oh my God, what is happening here? So, so you still control it with that, what? Hang on a minute, hang about, what? That's weird, man, what is going on here? So let's have a look at another game then, otherwise we're gonna be here all day looking at um, a really painfully uncomfortable way of playing a game. Next up, then we have Pac-Land. Oh my god, what? Hang about, I thought this was actually going to be like Pac-Man. Oh my god, I was not expecting that at all. 
I thought being like an Atari that we're gonna play Pac-Man. Right, well. Sounds are really, really good. You've got quite a big speaker here, so um, they're definitely making use of the uh, the sounds. So let's have a look at a different game. Next up, we have Blockout. Incidentally, this was £12, 11.99 when it came out, which is um, quite a reasonable price, I would say. Maybe back when this came out in the uh, early 90s, I think. That was probably a little bit more money. So this is Blockout then. We've got a cursor style going on here. Wow. Um, right, start game. So it is literally like a kind of a top down Tetris. Okay, so this next game is Shadow of the Beast. Let's have a quick look at this then. Um, how do we. So we kind of just got this like side scrolling. Although it is quite cool, the background moves a little bit differently, so it's kind of like 3D. We've got a big enemy here. I might, I don't know if I'm killing it or not. Oh dear. <laughs> and last of all then we have Checkered Flag, which is a, uh, a racing game. So this will appear to my uh, racing game fans. Um, Whack that in the top there. Ooh. Let's have a look at this one then. Yeah, it look, looks like quite a fun game. Just looks like your standard kind of racing game. Um, one thing I will mention on uh, camera, the, the screen looks quite blue. In person, it, it still looks blue, but it's not as blue. Um, so I don't really know how it's how it's making it look so blue, but I guess you can see there. The colours are actually quite vibrant on here. Um, it, as I said before, if you've got a Nomad, it's very similar to the... Uh, the screen's very similar to the Nomads. Anyway, that's pretty much it for this video. I really hope you guys have enjoyed. Thanks again so much to John for lending this to me. I really, really appreciate that. Um, next video, we're going to be having a look at the Neo Geo Pocket Color. So I hope you guys look forward to that. Thanks very much for watching, and I'll catch you in the next one. Peace.